Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review for C14 Dating. Now this is a game released by Rattalaka Games and they've sent me a copy, uh, so big thank you for that. Um, yeah, so this review is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be more of a, an Achievement Hunter review because um, this isn't the type of game I would usually play a lot of. I'm not going to lie, I'm not the biggest fan of um, a dating sims. It's not my cup of tea. I literally played this for the achievements. Now, um, I'll read the blurb like I always do and go over the game a little bit, but it's going to be more focused on the achievement side uh, of the game. So, uh, you play as Melissa Flores, a third year anthropology student participating in a summer archaeological internship. The field school takes place in Belgium, over 5,000 miles away from your native California. You'll be staying in an unfamiliar country for two months. It can be nerve-wracking, but you couldn't pass up such a learning opportunity. Maybe you'll dig up some bones, or even unearth tools that were manufactured by early humans. You might also forge friendships, forge friendships and find romance during your stay. So it features um, romance. Deandre, or I don't know how you pronounce it, Deandre, Hendrik, Kyler, and so Shoji. Uh, dating sim gameplay with optional archaeological minigames. Beautiful manga artwork and original soundtrack. Secret Yuri romance option. A different cast with some very unique characters. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It's a dating simulator. You play a girl and you basically you've got eight weeks to make your decisions about what you want to do. Uh, one thing I did notice about this, uh, when you start it up, it's got a pretty catchy and sort of upbeat um, sort of theme music. I quite like that. The art and the backgrounds and the menus and everything look great compared to some of the um, sort of dating sims and visual novels I've seen. Uh, and the archaeological sort of mini games are quite cool. They sort of remind me of um, Minesweeper in that sort of sense. Slightly different, but the sort of way you have to pick which bits you want to dig and stuff like that. Um, there's obviously like there's four love options with a secret fifth, um, and from an achievement perspective, you've got to basically play through at least five full times to get all the achievements. Um, the benefit is you can obviously like other sort of um, dating games, as you can see in the video just here. Uh, you can literally fast forward it and skip all the text and everything to make it a lot quicker when you're doing your achievement runs now if you're not just interested in achievements definitely play through it one or two times first to just enjoy the story it's not that bad um it's your bog standard stuff but it it's more well done and there's a lot more options and stuff than other sort of dating sims i've played like you've got like um Sort of like um, you pick what lessons and what activities you want to do each week in like your um, your planner, and they give you different stats and stuff like that, which obviously affect your choices and your outcomes and stuff. So I thought that was quite a nice little addition, which they don't normally put in these sort of games. Um, so that was really nice. Uh, yeah, once you've completed the the game sort of five times, you'll unlock all the achievements. You will need to do some sort of save states to sort of like right at the end of each playthrough just to pick the two like there's two options at the end and you'll get an achievement for each choice you make so just save it play one reload it play the other quickly just to just to get both endings and all the achievements are unlocked to unlock in like chibi artworks which are like the little cute pictures of each of the characters on your with your character and stuff like that um it'll take you if you follow a guide you're looking at about an hour um playing through yourself without a guide you will look at a lot longer because obviously you'll end up having to decide exactly what you need to pick exactly what sort of stats you want exactly what lessons you want to go to each day um there's a lot more depth into this than just some of them where it's just like yes yes no yes no yes yes no and there's a lot of like stuff that doesn't affect the story as well there's lots of conversation bits just for um story umph and sort of like giving you a bit more information so you can skip a lot of them if you're doing the achievements um but yeah, like I say, it's probably one of the better ones. Um, my only issue at the moment is it's currently on the Xbox Store at nineteen pounds ninety nine pence. I think it's nineteen dollars ninety nine in America, which is really expensive. I mean, that's half the price of like a normal big game. So it's very expensive at the moment. I mean, if this was one of the normal Rattle Acre games and it it was coming out at about even if it was like the seven, eight pound ones, it would be a lot more appealing. But at the moment, it's twenty pounds, so 
my honest opinion is. If you're into dating games and you love these sort of dating sims and stuff like that, this is probably one of the better ones at the moment on Xbox. It may interest you more buying it straight away. If you're just wanting it for the achievements, probably hold off. Rattle Acre games normally go on sale quite often, so you give it a month or two, this will probably be at least sort of 50% off. Uh, and even then, that's a slight push for me. But you guys might be a bit more uh, loose with your cash when it comes to getting your achievements in. So um, but I, I just couldn't recommend it at the moment, not for not for 20 quid. Now, it is optimised for uh, Xbox Series X and S. It does have smart delivery. And it does have uh, 4K and 60 FPS. I mean, you would hope so, since it's just a dating sim. Um, but that's what it says on the, uh, the Xbox store. But like I say, um, for an achievement hunting game, it's not like a five minute game you're looking at about an hour uh, and that's only if you use a, a guide if you are going to try and grind it yourself you're probably looking at sort of i'd say about three hours having going and back and forth as long as you're putting the fast forward on just to skip all the text because if not it'll take you a lot lot longer just to click through everything one at a time uh but other than that definitely recommend playing it like i say for at its current price, I can't recommend it. I'm not going to give it a score because it's not my type of game. I don't want to uh, unjustly like mark it down when it's it's doing what it does well. But for achievements, it's a decent game, but not at that price. It's way overpriced, in my opinion, for the sort of um, achievement sort of time you're going to get out of it. £20 for an hour's worth of gameplay isn't worth it, in my opinion. Uh, but that's it for this review. Uh, we're going to be doing loads more. Like I say, we've got a load of other games, especially sort of ones that are good for achievements, um, more indie games and stuff. We're going to do a load of reviews. Uh, I keep uploading them. Like I say, there's been another one today. There'll probably be more over the next week. If you can give us a like and subscribe on the channel, that'll be great. And we'll be having our Xbox Live party podcast today because it's uh, Saturday. So every Saturday, 8 p.m., live on youtube we do our uh, xbox and just general gaming uh, podcast feel free to jump in join the chat say hello ask questions we'd love to see you there but other than that i'll see you on the next video bye for now